Hi everyone, um, this is Laura coming to you today from The Last Days Ministries. I hope you guys are well. Um, today I want to approach a subject that is quite upsetting and maybe upsetting for other people who have been in a cult and understand the workings of a cult and how a cult works. But I wanted to bring this particular case to your um, under to your notice, so that you're aware, because this cult is still around. Um, now, I'm reading from apologeticsindex.org, and I will put the link underneath for you to peruse at your own leisure. And um, the first thing I want to show you is the above picture. There is of Jane Whaley or Wally, <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it says here the Word of Faith Fellowship in Spindale, North Carolina, USA presents itself as a charismatic church aligned with the Word of Faith movement. Pastor Jane Whaley, who believes that she alone receives messages from God, rules the church with an iron fist. And it goes on to say this, um, so the Word of Faith Fellowship is considered to be a so sociology, sociologically an abusive cult-like church to, s to such an extent that it should be considered a destructive cult and it's also considered to be theologically a cult of Christianity. I'm going to play um, a clip for you. Um, I'm going to probably play a couple of clips and then I'll come back to you about that. An hour and a half, I talked to Ben and Micah Cooper about their childhoods. Growing up in the Word of Faith Fellowship Church, they were two of 43 of those former members that talked to the Associated Press, outlining years of abuse and what they now call a cult. Hand in hand, Micah and Ben Cooper embrace the day that the secret of their childhood is exposed. Were you hit as a child? Absolutely. Micah and Ben were both brought to the Word of Faith Fellowship Church in Spindale by their families as children, taught from the start that they were unclean and wicked. I grew up genuinely believing that I was an evil person and that I was a rebellious child because I liked sports. Word of Faith Fellowship was founded by Jane Whaley and her husband Sam in the 1970s. The church has hundreds of members that have flocked from across the country to Western North Carolina, instilling the Word of God, which former members say could also be interpreted as Jane's Word. Do you call it a cult now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's got every characteristic of a cult. and. You know, the thing about being brainwashed is you don't know you're brainwashed when you're in there. I had no idea how brainwashed I was even after I left. As a teen, Ben Cooper says he was subject to abuse, mental and physical, but he says he wasn't alone. You harden your heart to where when she slaps you or you see her slap someone else, you're just like, I'm not going to think about it and you just push it down. Cooper described a place called the lower building where those in trouble were often placed with no outside communication to be taught a lesson. It's there where he says he saw a bloody beating by a minister. Um, after berating him, he literally walked up to him and started shoving the boy, just like smacking him really, really hard in the chest. And then he threw him to the floor. Um, the whole time he's screaming at him. Um, got on top of him and like starts slamming him down the ground like face first. Um, and they're going to say he had to do this because Jesus told him. Correct. Yeah, he was, this was showing this young man the love of God. It was one of those beatings that spurred this conversation with the church's founder that Ben Cooper decided to secretly record. We went to her to confront her about um, why this minister did this and why she hadn't done anything about that minister doing it. Um, so that's what this meeting is about. Right, but it's not right to use force like that. That's what I, that could have caused Blair to Stop it! You wouldn't be serving God today. It's some force we're not used to achieve. That's the devil himself speaking out of you. The grandmother. 
So that was the voice of Jane Whaley, who you just heard there. And, you know, you heard the boys say, but grandmother. Yes. They're responding to Jane as grandmother. She, they say that she instructed the entire congregation to call her that as their leader. And, and as the leader of the church, it seems like from reading the rules of this church that she had just absolute power. Those rules are scary with regards to, like, marriage and yep. childbirth. Who you marry, when you can have a child. And, and who, you know, Ben even explained that he wasn't allowed to stay with his biological parents. They've picked new parents for him and he lived with parents from the time when he was 16 till he went to college and you know a lot of these people are afraid to leave because they don't want to leave their other family members behind but you'll remember this isn't the first time that we've talked about abuse within uh, Word of Faith Fellowship. We actually talked to Matthew Finner back in 2015 after he came out and five people yes. were charged uh, in, in an assault against him. Let's take a listen to that interview. My head was being flung back. My vision was going like brown and black. I honestly thought I was going to die. Now, you remember there were several incidents, and here they are listed on your screen. 2013, Matthew Venner says he was attacked for being gay. In 2011, a man says that he was held against his will for being gay. And then also in 2003, children taken from minister's home for an abusive environment. When you look at that, you wonder how is it that this church has been able to exist for so long? I mean, I know they have a court case from, with the Fenner court, Fenner court Which is case. still pending. Yeah. But, I mean, what, what do people say about the fact that there's been so many situations and now and so many examples of violence and yet the church is still there? I think there's so many questions that can't be answered right now. And I know that the AP obviously did an excellent job investigating this for over a year. Mm -hmm. And um, next week we're going to get a part two of that. I think a lot of those questions are going to be answered now, in that. For perspective, how big a church are we talking here? Right now they have about 700 members. So it's a lot of people. And they, it's not just here in Spindale, North Carolina. It's actually also in Brazil and in Ghana. They have several outside missionaries outside the U.S. that yeah. people travel back and forth to. Well, great work, and we look yes. forward to uh, that continuation Thanks, of the story. Thanks, Brianna. Thank you for that. For 19 years, Danielle Cordes' life centered on the Word of Faith Fellowship. Four years ago, she fled. Out here, there's so much freedom, and there I felt so much captivity. She left the church and her family. There'd be like 20 to 40 people at least all screaming so like just to the top of their lungs just basically screaming as loud as you possibly can while they are hitting you it went on for hours and hours and i was just like so sore from like just bruises covered in bruises but it's not just the unconventional way they worship since early last fall we've been investigating what they've been doing inside the church to their youngest most helpless children all in the name of god i know a few things I know eddie taylor who just left the church after six years says he got the shock of his life one sunday morning when he just happened to go to a part of the church he'd never visited before one time i walked in the nursery and all the kids were tied in the chair with a cloth behind them tied to the chair where the kids couldn't get out and play. I don't really know. I mean, they were just sitting there. Roberta Priest knows she worked in the nursery where no matter how young or fussy, children who are brought here are regularly restrained with their bed sheets at the direction of church leaders. The screams you hear are the prayers they're subjected to in a nearby bathroom when they won't sit completely still. Why tie them up? Because they got out of their chairs if you didn't. And, and according to Jane, that was the restraints of God. In fact, something was said about how we tie the children up in the, in the nursery. And she came back within the next day or two saying, don't ever say that. Just say that's their seat belts. Older children endure it, too. This father and his young son are screaming to break generations of demons. Across the church, another dad is angry that his young daughter won't take hold, settle down, and obey Jesus. Every parent here is expected to teach their children how to participate in these ear-shattering shouts, often for hours at a time. We asked Dr. Ruth Peters, a respected child psychologist, to watch lots of our videotape. Her conclusion? Oh, this is definitely child abuse. There's no, there's no excuse in my mind for it. If you look at the kids' faces, it's really quite fascinating. They're dead. They really are. Their faces are dead. Their eyes are dead. They're not really responding. I think they're very scared, but after a couple years of this, they become numb to it. They know how to walk the walk and talk the talk, and they just go through it, and they know that they will be punished probably severely if they aren't well-mannered. I get hit so hard one time that I almost flew over the desk. 
You know, and then that's when I realized, well, hey, this is not right. This is For the first time, as part of an Associated Press investigation, 43 former church members are sharing their stories. It hurt too much. So now when I think about it, it is really hard. They say they suffered years of abuse, physical, emotional, even sexual, often at the hands of ministers. I experienced being knocked on the ground on numerous occasions. Uh, I was, you know, picked up and thrown into some cabinets. Uh, they describe not down, only serious injuries, around. but blasting. A screaming prayer to drive out demons. For John Cooper, one beating still haunts him. There's several guys who are a little bit older than me that were um, kind of on top of me and punching me in the chest. And then um, another guy was kind of holding my arm on the side and just shaking me back and forth. And I ended up with bruises from that. And of course, my, my chest was like entirely bruised from, from one side to the other. The Word of Faith Fellowship traces its history to Spindale, North Carolina, a small town in the western foothills. It is here where Jane Whaley founded the church in 1979. The congregation is more than 700 strong. There are hundreds more congregants at churches in Brazil and Ghana. Let me tell you, it's the unclean that has driven every one of them out of here. I was being accused of unclean, which is this vague, you know, accusation that we got all the time. She would get up in the pulpit and be like, throw them into the floor and get their devils out. From what they wear to when they have sex, former church members say Jane Whaley exerts strict control. The AP investigation is based on scores of interviews, hundreds of pages of police and court documents, and dozens of secret audio recordings. Former church members say in recent years the assaults grew more violent. They worry the victims could number in the hundreds. Almost all of us were to the point that we believed that there was almost no chance that we'd be saved. Attorney Benjamin Cooper says children were often taken from their parents, placed in ministers' homes, and beaten. Religious freedom stops when abuse starts. And in my opinion, the abuses have long since outrun the defense of religious freedom. For decades, the church has faced serious allegations. Several times, former church members say they were told to lie to authorities to thwart investigations. Jane Whaley turned down the AP's request for interviews. But hours after this story first ran, she denied the allegations saying the church doesn't allow or condone abuse. This is happening and it's going to continue to happen until someone stops it or uh, Jane tells everyone to drink the Kool-Aid, everyone does it and dies. Danielle Cordes is now a business major at the University of Florida. Her parents are still in Spindale. They refuse to see her. I mean, I love my parents and there's nothing I can do to even to get that back right now. I completely block them out of my mind just as a coping mechanism. And then there's other days that, I mean, I'll just like break down and cry because it's like, I don't know. For those who fled, there's fear and anguish over the families and friends still there. Alex Sands, The Associated Press, Spindale, North Carolina. A local man reveals what he says it was like to be a part of a large controversial church in Rutherford County. Yeah, former member John Huddle says the Word of Faith Fellowship is actually a cult. Today, News 13's Ashley Searles talked with Huddle about his new book released this month called Locked In. Don't drink root beer, don't drink cheer wine, don't drink diet cheer wine. Don't it's a 145 beer. item don't list of things you stuff, cannot do, including don't watch TV, read. celebrate Christmas, or play ping pong. Don't read books that are not approved by leadership. In his new book, John Huddle claims the list was created by leaders of Word of Faith Fellowship Church, which he, after being a member with his family for six years, now says is a cult. So when you're inside the group, you don't concentrate on what you're giving up. You concentrate on what you think you're gaining. 
which is relationship with God and God's people and eternal salvation. In Locked In, Huddle, who says he left the church in 2008, details how members were ordered to dress the same way, and the children all had to attend the Christian school that's on the Spindale Church grounds, that many members lived on that property and often communally, he says, as a means of control. A lot of the restraints are out of fear, uh, fear that you will lose your family, fear that you'll lose your job, fear if you lose your house. According to Huddle, the church has about doubled in size to 750 some since he left. Very hard because my family stayed. Huddle says he is no longer allowed to see or talk to his son or daughter and that he wrote this book to offer guidance and hope from the outside. My children believe what they were told. They pretty much grew up there. When you leave, you're told you're going to hell and you're losing your salvation. And they have dared to cross that bridge that possibly something they're being told is not true. In McDowell County. But there's hope. Ashley Searles, News 13. Well, John Huddle says he decided to leave the church after being screamed at by a group of members for holding a part-time job. He says he knew then the church had become too controlling. We reached out to Word of Faith for a comment today, but they did not return our calls. So, there you have it. So, now you see what a cult can do. Um, I just want to say, before I read something more, um, I want to say this. If you have recently come out of a cult and have been involved in a cult, I have been involved in a cult and there are many feelings that arise and many thoughts that arise when you leave a cult. Like, how could I have been so stupid? Why didn't I see it? Why, why didn't I understand from the beginning? One thing I've noticed with cults, now I don't know if this happened in uh, Word of Faith Fellowship in North Carolina, but what they do in the very beginning is they love bomb you. They make you feel so loved and so cared for. And then that goes on for a little while and then all of a sudden that starts to stop. And then you sort of feel like, okay, well I better do better. Well then maybe then they love me. Um, so, you know, I just want to say it's not about your intelligence because there are people in cults that are extremely intelligent, doctors, lawyers, nurses, um, people like myself who was an artist, um, you know, things like that, people who work in offices, you know, whatever you work at, praise God, you know, whatever you do, um, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, which is, I think, one of the most important jobs in the whole wide world, to be quite honest, um, you know, whoever you are, whatever you do, you are made in God's image and likeness and you are extremely precious to God. And um, what these people have tried to do is they've tried to make you feel worthless and stupid. And you're not worthless and you're not stupid. And you're not, you know, it, it doesn't mean that you have no intelligence. What happened usually in cults is it's deception. And of course, when we're deceived, we don't know we're deceived, right? So then sometimes it takes a while for the remnant of God who are stuck in these cults, for, and God will bring, bring out his remnant from these particular movements. It takes time. Now, the first thing I would suggest, and I would suggest this book, it's called The Subtle Power of Spiritual Abuse. It's an excellent book. If you have just come out of a cult, I'll put the link underneath for you to look it up on Amazon, or you can get it maybe close to where you live. I don't know, or wherever you wanna get it, but I'll give you the Amazon link for the book, and I would advise you to go and read it, because I think it would really help you understand what you've been through. Um, the second thing I wanna say is that if, you have come out of a cult and you're confused. Um, I would suggest that you seek counsel. Um, and I know it's, you feel frightened. I get that because when you come out of something like that, it, it's very hard to trust. But if you're 
now in a really good church or you know of a really good friend or whoever it is you know maybe you could talk to them so I wanted to read um, now again this is from uh, this that's basically the information I'm getting from um, for this is from the apologeticsindex.org and I will put the link underneath now what's really sad about this is that there's 700 people still at the Spindel location the first thing you'll notice is um, with cults is they don't let you think for yourself so like just let's just say for instance I don't know like they won't let they, they'll they'll tell you how to dress they'll tell you what to eat sometimes they'll tell you um, who you can and can't date they'll tell you who you can get married to when I was in a cult they told me that I wasn't allowed date I was to wait for God to tell me him who was in the church that God spoke, let God speak to him and then he would come to submit me and then God would speak to me and I would go and submit to him. It's just a big mess. Um, but, the, but this is the kind of thing they do. They add on to the Bible a load of rules and regulations and legalisms that actually put you under more bondage. You know, when we become Christians, it is by grace through faith that you are saved, not of yourselves. And when you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes in. He seals you until the day of redemption. And the Holy Spirit leads you. Now, the Word of God is the final authority for truth and practice. That's what we go to. When the Holy Spirit gives you a new heart of flesh, which He does when you're saved, your desires change. You want to serve the Lord. You want to do what's right. Your desire is just to love Him and serve Him. But he's also given you a brain. And I'm not saying that sarcastically. I'm saying that even to myself, I'm saying that because for a while there, I, I used to be saying, okay, God, you know, can I do this? And can I? and it, it took me a while to get out of this mindset. Now, granted, I'm out of this cult since 1991. But I just wanted to show you the, some of the list of what she forbids people to do. And if she left you alone, you would know instinctively that some of these things you may not want to do. Or some of these things you may want to do. Now, let's first of all, let's look at, okay, the cult-like control. And this is what this person says who wrote this. The control Jane Whaley assumes over the members of her church, including her husband, Sam Whaley, is extreme according to the Associated Press it includes followers are banned from celebrating birthdays and religious or secular holidays including Christmas Easter and the 4th of July now in the scripture it talks about the fact that we in in our own conscience can decide what we're going to celebrate right in in our own conscience if we want to celebrate our birthday, that's fine. If that's what you feel like, that's fine. Fine. You were you were born on a certain day and want to celebrate. That's fine. Um, if you decide that a certain day is special, some other Christian may not, but you may find that Christmas Day is important because it reminds you of Christ and the crucifixion and uh, you know and and um, what Jesus did on the cross and the fact that he was born on that day. You know, if that's in your conscience. That you think it's okay to do you're allowed to do it um you know and the same with christmas easter and the fourth of july i'm not an american but i'm sure god is not going to be angry about you um celebrating the fourth of july i i i don't see him sitting up in heaven going now you <laughs> you're not allowed to celebrate the fourth of july because you're eating too many burgers no i honestly don't see that at all Okay, so the next thing, congregan congregants are prohibited from watching television and movies, reading newspapers or eating in restaurants that play music or serve alcohol. Now, let's look at this in, in a logical perspect perspective, okay? Here in Ireland, you know, I hardly ever watch television. I, I, I like me to have a television, but 
I, because I'm a Christian, I don't enjoy watching smutty television. I don't enjoy it. Why? Because I'm saved. And I, li I like things that are holy and, and pretty good. You know, like, I'll watch vet, vet programs. You know, little little animals. I love animals. Um, I'll watch uh, judge programs, you know, where you've got someone who's bringing a law thing and you've got the judge and he's deciding. I think that's fine. I, I watch certain nature documentaries I find very interesting. But, you know, to be honest with you, I might watch a soap here and there, but they're not really my thing. But that you know yourself in your spirit because you love Christ and you want to do what's right. So if you decide you want to watch whatever television that you in your conscience know that it's right before the Lord, go right ahead and do it. There's no, there's no laws for that. And the movies as well. You're the one that makes the decision before the Lord. You're the one that looks at the movie and go, okay, is there lots of swearing in it? Well then, maybe you won't enjoy it because you're a Christian and you like those, and you like those things which are righteous and holy and good, right? Or you may think, oh, that cartoon looks okay and I, my little ones are safe enough or whatever. That's up to you. That's your conscience, okay? This is why we have the Holy Spirit. He's our help. He's our helper. Now, reading newspapers, again, you use, I mean, you're an adult. You can decide to read certain articles. You may want to look at what's going on in the world so you can pray for those things. Um, I mean, okay, now here's, okay, here's the sticky part. Okay, or eating in restaurants that play music or serve alcohol. Now, if there is a person that is an alcoholic that is going with you to the restaurant, you might not want to go to a restaurant with alcoholism, with alcoholic stuff in it, because that would be, you know, putting a, a load of temptation in front of a precious person who suffers with this, okay? So you don't want to do that. But if you're with friends and you think, oh yeah, I'd really like, you know, a taco. <laughs> I used to love tacos in California. They were delicious. Anyway, we go for a taco. And there's bound to be some beers around. Now, I was never an alcoholic in my life. And the boyfriend I was seeing at the time had never drank alcohol. He wasn't. So we could go there. And it, it, it wasn't sinful before the Lord. We had a taco. We talked about God. Mm. Okay, so. <laughs> and the thing is, I'm not being funny, guys. But like playing music. Okay, think about this. right? You go to your local. I know this is not a restaurant. But you go to your local grocery store. And in the grocery store, they usually are playing <coughs> are playing music. You go to your local mall, they're usually playing music. Now, unless you hide under a bushel, you're going to hear music. Okay, so, again, we are in this world. We are not of this world. It's not like we like listening to it, but it's there. You know, I mean, that's just fact of the matter otherwise you'd never be able to buy your groceries okay this, this you know that's what i'm showing you how ridiculous this is okay now the next thing yeah i can understand men and women must swim with shirts covering their upper bodies and cannot take the extra clothing off in public not even in their own backyards now we know that god obviously wants men and women to be modest i get that and i you know i'll i will be modest when I'm away on holiday or whatever, which I haven't been away for about six years, but, you know, you want modesty, and I, I respect that, you know. Um, and as far as in your own backyard, I mean, the thing is, like, it all depends on whether you have a big, I don't know, big bush that covers the whole place, and it's it's really, so nobody really can see you. But I shorts and t-shirts, I, and, or if you're swimming a swimsuit I don't see anything wrong with that guys seriously um, men cannot grow beards uh, show me that in scripture please I'd love to see that in scripture uh, followers are not allowed to enroll in college without permission and if permission is granted can attend only alongside other members so their behaviour can be monitored Whaley also picks their majors and they must work for the church or a business owned by church leaders once they leave school. Now, this is utter rubbish. Rubbish. And I'll tell you why it's utter 
rubbish. Jesus may have made a little child with aptitude to be a doctor, right? And that little boy, he will come to know Jesus, but he will want to help people to get well. So his calling is to be maybe a doctor, or he wants to be a doctor. God is not sitting up in heaven going, I know, you know, you're not allowed to be a doctor. No. Or maybe there's a little girl and she wants to grow up to be some kind of designer, a fashion designer or something like that. And she's working and it's she has her own store and she's designing clothes that are modest, but, you know, really attractive and whatever. Fantastic. Maybe you have a little child that wants to be a nurse when they grow up. And that's what their their commission that's what God has given them to do. Then there's children that will want to be a scientist, like for instance Ken Ham's thing where, you know, uh answers in Genesis, where they have the most amazing um people who debunk evolution and all that kind of stuff and uh they have um which i'm terrible at i don't even remember half the name but the scientists kind of thing whether it's physics or you know we need the, these kind of people in the church to help us right so to say that they can only in college without permission is ridiculous and if permission is granted now i mean look let me tell you something you are free in christ you have grace in Christ. You don't need permission from another human being to decide what you're going to do with your life before the Lord. You go and pray to the Lord about it. And then if the door opens, the door opens. You apply to different colleges that you feel are appropriate for the kind of degree or whatever you want to get. And you do it. It's very simple. Okay. Now, to be monitored for their behavior, that is ridiculous. Look, when I'm saved, I have the Holy Spirit convicting my spirit if something is wrong. God will convict my heart. He will say, uh, 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 you know, so we don't need anybody doing that. That's very controlling. I mean, we're adults. Okay, and then to make it matters worse is that she picks their majors. How dare she? None of her Oh, none of her business. Okay? Um, and then she wants everyone to work in the church or have a business owned by the church. Guys, this is ridiculous. This is because what it does is it she's essentially she's controlling everything about you. You do know that that's witchcraft. That is actually witchcraft. Manipulation and control is witchcraft. Now you heard her screaming at the top of her voice. One of the fruits of the spirit, and especially for us females, okay, is a gentle and quiet spirit. That's what it says in the Bible. Fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Now they're beating children up they're screaming at the top of their lungs. There, uh, there's a woman pastor, which is not biblical anyway, and she's in rebellion against God. They're teaching the word of faith doctrine also. Not only is it called the word of faith fellowship, but they're teaching that doctrine as well. So you've got all of these um, horrendous <coughs> things going on there, okay? And the next thing she says, Wiley's permission is required to buy a house or a car. Now, the fact of the matter is this, that if you are married and not married or married, single or, or, or married, okay, and you decide with your wife or your husband, I'm going to be buying a house and I'm going to be buying a car. It's none of, their, it's none of her business. Because she is, this, this is just, this is just evil. I mean, really, this, this is downright evil. Um, I, I, I just, you know, I, I just can't get my head around this. You are allowed by God, <laughs> you're adults, you go out, you decide, okay, I like that house, like that car, get that car, whatever. 
The next one is members are not allowed, allowed to wear Nike products because Whaley believes the company's iconic swoosh logo is a pagan symbol. <laughs> well, I don't really know how to comment on that, but all I'll say is that it could be a, p- a pagan a pagan symbol, but let's just face it, right? You decide what shoes you're going to buy. They're shoes, clothes, you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> Congregants aren't allowed to play board games like Monopoly. So the next thing, in addition, the church has what AP dis- titles as unconventional rules for sex and marriage. Okay. So congregants need permission from leader Jane Whaley and other ministers to get married. And it then can take months or even a year before the newlyweds are allowed to have sex. Now, that goes against the Bible. The Bible says for a married couple to come together in case they are tempted. That's what scripture says. Uh, No one is allowed to date without permission and most relationships and marriages are arranged by Whaley and ministers. (sighs) On their wedding night, couples are permitted to only a godly peck on the cheek. When they get in bed together, they must roll over and go to sleep. I mean, Oh gosh. Uh, okay, I'm I'm just gonna read these, but you can. <laughs> For all married couples, love making is limited to thirty minutes. No foreplay is allowed. The lights must be turned off, and only the missionary position is sanctioned. Okay. <laughs> couples need permission from church leadership to have children. Who the heck does she think she is, God? And leaders dole out condoms to make sure unapproved women don't get pregnant. The former followers said couples violating the rules can be publicly rebuked, subjected to violence, and forced to separate. So, there are all the nutty, off-the-wall, ridiculous um, rules. You know, I want to be very delicate when I say this, but when a man and a woman get married, they become one flesh. They are holy in the eyes of God. The marriage bed is is undefiled. It's holy, it's beautiful, and there is nothing wrong with it. The Bible says that a child is a blessing to the couple. A little baby is a blessing. My sister just had the most gorgeous little baby boy, and he's the most beautiful blessing. She already has two little boys, and they're just beautiful little boys, and I love them so much my little nephews when God decides to bring a child into the world think about this Whaley is telling these couples this makes me angry this makes me so angry telling these couples when they can have children who does she think she is God decides when a baby is born God knows the baby before it's born she has absolutely no right she's going against scripture no right to determine and decide when a couple is going to have a baby and when a couple is who are sanctified before the lord that are one flesh decide when to copulate the for, for when to um yeah copulate for having a baby that's that's nobody's business except for the couple before the Lord Jesus Christ they are one and it's holy and it's pure and it's good this business of a godly peck on the cheek that's not scriptural so anyway what I'm trying to say is that you have been given if you're saved and you've come out of this cult the Holy Spirit will teach you in the way you should go and you read the scripture and you test everything by the word of God especially you know when these kind of rules about marriage and having babies and all this nonsense that's totally unbiblical it's actually quite satanic the Roman Catholics don't allow uh, the priests to marry and look at the mess they're in anyway um, you know I want to say that I'm, I don't hate Anne Whaley I'm furious at what she does And I know God is furious at what she does. 
but I don't hate her. And I don't hate the people. And in actual fact, I'm going to be praying for those. There's 700 people in that church who are under this type of um, terrible bondage. You know, and as, oh yeah, I wanted to mention one more thing. When you're saved, let me tell you something. When you're saved, the Holy Spirit enters into your temple. And the demons, the demons that these people are screaming out, telling, oh, you're, you know, get out of them. There's no demons in them. If they're born again and saved and sealed until the day of redemption, there's no demons in them. Because the minute the Holy Spirit comes into your temple, they have to leave. They're not allowed to stay. And this business of, oh, the third or fourth generation, let me tell you, we have to always read scripture in its correct context. You know, um, now I'm not sure what that scripture is in its correct context, but I know it's in the Old Testament, and I'll be honest, I don't know. But what I will say is this, that you are responsible yourself for your life before the Lord. You're the one that when you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ by grace through faith are you saved not of yourself lest no man should boast right so it's not by works that you are saved you then are saved and will go before what they call the Bema seat and you will throw your crown of Christ Christ will give you your eternal rewards okay um, so and those who are the goats or the tares um, people like this woman, really, if she doesn't repent, will be saying, Lord, Lord, but didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do good deeds in your name? And, and he'll say to her, depart from me, you accursed, I never knew you. Because she was wicked. Now, I'm sorry, but and, and I don't, I'm not even going to say I'm sorry, but you don't hurt a child. Now, that precious young African-American young man, I, my heart just ached for that young man and also for that other young man and for that precious blonde girl and for that other precious girl I cried when I saw this and I and these these were children obviously growing up from the 1990s and are now adults and you saw the um, footage of it in 1995 this precious little child with her little dress and she's rocking back and forth and then you have this sweet little boy and he's banging on the floor and he, and he looks like he's four or five and I'm just saying like Jesus is really angry about this type of stuff if you hurt my little ones it's better for you for you to be thrown into the into the sea you know or what's it called put a, a thing around your neck and thrown into the sea <sighs> you know I am I tell you something I'm I'm scared for those people but anyway, brothers and sisters, I'm just going to end with the, with a word of prayer. Lord, I just want to lift up everybody that's in that cult still in Carolina. And Lord, I pray, Father God, that you would set these people free. Lord, I pray for those precious people that I saw on the video that were abused and beaten and hurt when they were children in that church, Father. Lord, I pray that you'd put your loving arms around them and bring them comfort and care father lord i ask this in jesus name amen okay that's all i have for you at the moment may the lord bless you may the lord keep you and may the lord let us light to shine upon you and i'll talk to you super soon bye for now bye bye